This is Bait, Life Outside the Federal Witness Protection Program. A very dangerous way to exist. Skin has, cat has, everybody, gun bad, situation, aggravation, everybody, allegation, innocence, on the news, everybody, dark food, bang bang, shot dead, everybody, gun bad, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Hey, it's Suze, and welcome to today's episode of Life Outside with Sex slash Keep the Bad Guys Away. Holy cow, I can't even believe that I'm alive today after what happened yesterday when a customs agent at the U.S.-Mexico border chewed my ass out. I mean, like, for no apparent reason. I mean, oh my God, boy. And let me tell you, when I re-entered... Mexico today from the United States and I saw you know the Mexican military have you ever seen them boy dude let me tell you they are badasses I mean when I when I saw this when I saw this military guy Mexican military guy with his big badass machine gun I was like oh my god I am so happy to see you I mean who geez OP let me tell you let me tell you what happened yesterday oh it's horrible it was so horrible, I had to call Special Agent Paul Burkholder with Homeland Security Investigations down in Houston, Texas. And you know what? I was almost ready to call the U.S. Marshal Service because, I mean, this agent, this customs agent was so over the top. Okay, so get this. This is what happened. All right, so you know what? Everybody's got to work. And unfortunately, I still have to work outside of the home, even though it's been recommended to me by, you know, experts that a home office is a good idea rather than, you know, working outside of the home like as a nurse. Okay, but anyway, so I had this agency shift that I was uh, scheduled and confirmed for for this hospital in San Diego, right? Because, you know, plus I'm like trialing this whole concept. Can I live in a foreign country and still work in the United States? Like, is this even feasible, right? So the, this was, yesterday, this was a great test. Okay, so my shift in the emergency room started at 2 p.m. So, you know, I got up early in the morning, shift was confirmed by the agency, got ready, you know, went down to the U.S.-Mexico border, went through, you know, the customs line, just like anybody else that's leaving Mexico goes through the customs line, okay? So then now, and the line's long, I waited about an hour or so. And then, you know, I was like next in line, and boy, I mean, it was so blatantly obvious that they brought up a, a customs agent to sit at a certain post you know, just because I was next in line, just so the certain agent could talk to me, you know, versus me just going in, you know, as being the next person in line for the customs agents that were already sitting there. It was so obvious they brought in this other customs agent to sit down at this empty desk and say, okay, come here, little girl. I mean, that's pretty much how it was. Boy, this guy was an asshole. You've crossed the border a lot of times, haven't you? And I'm like, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. And, you know, there's good reason for that, dude. You know, and so get this. So I get out. Oh, God, I guess I should have this right. So, you know, I had this all sitting out. My Homeland Security victim letter, the one that's the congressional response letter, the one that I have all over the Internet, right? So I have this whole thing out ready. This one, the same exact one, the same exact one. So I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I got all this, you know, problem, you know, my family's missing and stuff. And there's all this, you know, garbage that goes along with this disaster there, customs agent. And then like he looks at this and he's like, because it does say Senator Harry Reid on it. But if, you know, you look at the top, it says U.S. Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So that's like his department. Okay, but like he looks at this letter and he's like, oh, well, Harry Reid's like, I don't work for Senator Harry Reid. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, yeah, but you work for the Department of Homeland Security. So then he was like, you know, first blowing this off. And I'm like, well, yeah, when they got this, I'm like, Senator Harry Reid said that they opened up an FBI investigation. Well, he didn't like that. I was trying to explain to him that the retaliation has been quite brutal. And that, you know, I have to make some adaptations and stuff like that. And life's really rough and all that. And, you know, I was trying to, like, convey this to him. And he was just over and over being an ass to me. And he was just like, he was just like, uh, oh, 
I used to work, I forget where, if he said he worked for, um, he either worked for like a sheriff's department or he worked for like a police department or something like that. And he's worked with the FBI and he's worked with the CIA and he knows stuff about NSA stuff and all this. And I'm like, well, good, because this case is terrorism. This is a terrorism case, dude. One that hasn't exactly been the most appropriately handled, dude. You know, but he's just acting like all hot shit, you know, like, oh, I worked with the, you know, with the FBI and the CIA and NSA and all that. And I used to be whatever, a cop, a sheriff and blah, blah, blah. And this is like my other job and I'm getting ready to retire from customs and all that. And I'm sort of thinking, whatever. And he's giving me a hard time because I'm crossing the border. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I got Homeland Security agents. I told him, I said, I got Special Agent Paul Burkholder with HSI down in Houston. I said, a lot of your other agents, you know, and stuff know home i mean just in general agents with the department of homeland security I means so that's border patrol other customs agents i mean agents lots of agents i said and the marshals know that i have trouble all the time too but you know he's just giving me a hard time because i'm crossing the border he's like well why don't you just live in the united states and i'm sort of thinking why the hell should i live in the united states you know i didn't say this to him this is what i was thinking why the hell should I live in the United States with it? We need a bunch of other fucking goddamn government law enforcement fucking assholes is what I was thinking to myself. Why? So I can be used as bait for terrorists in the United States so I can I can get killed or kidnapped just like every other victim in this case considering that everybody else is missing. Asshole. I mean, this is like what I wanted to say to him, but I didn't. I had to bite my tongue. I even had to, I even, when I left Special Agent Burkle at our message, I'm like, I didn't tell this customs agent what I really, really, really wanted to tell him. Boy, dude, I could have told this fucking goddamn customs agent to, to fucking goddamn shove it because my whole fucking family's missing. You got this damn jackass terrorist. You have him fucking deported out running the goddamn streets and his goddamn family. And for some reason, he seems to get a whole hell of a lot of help. So why don't you tell me, customs agent, why the hell your even your own damn department hasn't thrown this fucking goddamn terrorist back in fucking prison, dude? I mean, all this stuff is what I wanted to say, but I didn't. Then he tries to accuse me of wearing scrubs in, in attempts to, like, conceal something, like, to cross the border. Something to the effect of, like, narcotics or drugs or something like that. I'm like, what do you think I got? Like, drugs on me? I'm like, you can search my bag. I'm like, you want to search my bag? Search my bag. So we started searching my bag, right? I'm like, I don't care. I said, I don't have anything to hide. Go ahead and search my bag. And then you want me to like lift up my shirt and stuff. He's like accusing me of like wearing scrubs because, you know, I'm like trying to like conceal drugs or something across the border. And I'm sitting thinking, you fucking goddamn white motherfucking goddamn asshole. Fucking goddamn customs agent, you dick. I got to go to work in the emergency room. And take care of scumbags like fucking you while my whole goddamn family's missing. That's what I wanted to say to him. But so finally after, you know, I throw around enough stuff like the marshals know this case and blah, 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 blah. I mean, then finally he just shut up and like, you know, left me alone. But it was kind of embarrassing there crossing the border and like having a customs agent trying to, you know, see basically what he was doing. He was scolding me for leaving the United States. Why don't you live in the United States? You know, I'm like, well, dude, I don't even have a home, dude. I don't even have a home. And I was saying, like, you know, the marshals know this case. I'm like, for example, the marshals in El Paso. He's like, well, why don't you go back to El Paso? And I'm sort of thinking, God damn it, you fuckhead, you white fuckhead. Why don't you, you know, get out your DHS customs credit card and pay for me to go back to El Paso, you fucking dick, whitehead jackass. Just because you're pissed off because you don't want to arrest the FBI. You don't want to arrest your little goddamn fucking goddamn white asshole cop and FBI fucking friends is pretty much what this boils down to. I was so goddamn pissed. <sighs> so, but anyway, he finally left me alone. And of course, no, I wasn't bringing drugs across the border. I was going to work. So then after I get through customs, and of course my bag, you know, I mean, everybody scans their bag through security and all that. You know, of course I don't have anything. Then I get to a certain point where I can call Special Agent Burkholder and, you know, tell him what happened in a little bit more calmer fashion than what I just described. Of course, you know, like I said, explaining to him that I think that his own, you know, agent in his own department is pretty much a fucking asshole. And the best 
way that I possibly could, the most professional way that I possibly could. And I almost thought about calling the marshal service because I'm thinking to myself, see, here was the kicker. This was the big clue, the big red flag on this one. Is that, you know, I've been through the border many, many times in many other countries too, by plane, boat. I have never in my entire life been treated the way that I was treated by this customs agent yesterday. So that was a big red flag that something was not right. Usually they're extremely professional and they know that there's a lot of problems customs does. Just generally speaking, their department in many other districts. So something was totally not right. I mean, I mean, I was so close to calling the marshal service and I've got some of their cell phone numbers, some of these deputies. So I could have just gotten on the phone. I could have called them, but like, I couldn't figure out what was, you know, I couldn't figure out if it just needed a royal ass chewing by like, let's say a peer with Homeland Security, or if there was something highly criminal that was being plotted or something like that. And that I needed to call the marshal service. I just wasn't sure. So I, I only told HSI, but still, man, oh my God, it was so unreal. Then I got in the trolley and I went out. I went out for my nursing shift and all that. And it was really interesting when the trolley stopped in front of the hospital, every single door opened for the trolley for people to get off, except the one that I was standing in front of. I had to actually run down run down the hallway inside the trolley and try to bust out another door before the trolley took off so I wouldn't miss my stop there, which was right, you know, right at work and all that. I was like, Christ, dude, what the hell they do? Hack the damn trolley? But anyway, went to work. Work was fine. I loved this hospital. I love this emergency room and all that. Got off in the middle of the night, had to wait a few hours because the trolley doesn't run 24 hours a day. So I'd wait a few hours at the hospital, take the trolley back down to the border and cross the border. And let me tell you, boy, you know what? I was just like waiting. I thought, I thought for damn sure. I'm like, they're going to end up sending a bunch of fucking assholes after me. The way that this customs agent was treating me yesterday. I'm like, you wait, they're going to send a bunch of motherfucking assholes after me just because they don't want to arrest FBI agents or the CIA guy, Mark Moore. And boy, when I got to San Diego, I told the San Diego police because like one of their officers already knows me from like, knows me as someone that's been screwed, you know, from like, you know, a couple years ago, somebody in San Diego with the San Diego PD already knows my case. So when I saw a couple officers, San Diego police officers yesterday, I told them, I said, you know, I face a lot of retaliation because of this. So if something happens when I'm at the hospital, just know that Special Agent Paul Burkholder with HSI down in Houston knows me and the Marshals know me and there's other agents and stuff just in case something happens. I didn't tell him about this customs agent ordeal because I didn't know what to think about that, but like I warned him. But I am surprised that I made it back to Mexico today after what happened yesterday, but oh my God. I'm telling you, dude, bad law enforcement, corrupt law enforcement, very, very dangerous. They're so network connected together that they would just rather attack me than to go after their own kind. That's today's episode of Life Outside with Sick. Keep the bad guys away. Oh, God. Keep your machine gun handy or stun gun handy. There's real criminals and terrorists out there. I'll see you next time.